I always wondered why whenever I did like the Airdyne bike, like where you're like, got the fan bike with your, your arms and your legs moving, or whenever I did like battle ropes, I would get like such a crazy good workout. Like I didn't really process it. I thought maybe it's okay, I'm just moving my entire body, so maybe I'm having a massive increase in my heart rate. But the reality is there's actually some interesting science surrounding the world of doing upper body high intensity interval training. Like it's a huge difference in terms of not only the perceived exertion, but also the heart rate and blood pressure. So like if you're trying to get a quick workout and get your most bang for the buck, it actually pays huge dividends to do upper body high intensity interval training. Now, I used to always do a ton of like sled pushes and a bunch of squats and everything like that with my HIIT workouts. And that was great, it would get my heart rate up. And I think that there was a strong metabolic effect because I was moving big muscles. But when I started shifting towards doing more upper body like plyometrics and HIIT, I noticed a huge difference in my physique. So of course my team and I started diving into the research to try to figure out exactly what's going on. And we've discovered some interesting stuff. That's exactly what we're gonna talk about in this video. You are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos every single Tuesday, Friday, Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time and a bunch of other videos throughout the week as well. Please, please, please turn on that little notification button so you can know whenever I go live or post new videos. And for those of you that are aiming to lose a bunch of fat and get in the best shape possible, whether it's doing keto or fasting, you have to check out my Thrive Grocery Box that I created. It's down in the description below. They're a huge sponsor of this channel and I've created a grocery box so that you can click on that link and literally get what I would recommend at the grocery store delivered right to your door. So let's go ahead, let's get right into the science. Okay, so the Brazilian Journal of Physical Therapy actually published a study that found when you were doing upper body movements, upper body actual activity or resistance exercise, you had a bigger increase in overall heart rate and blood pressure. So what this particular study did is it took a look at a few individuals and it had them do uh, their one repetition max so that they could determine what their strength level was at. And then what they had them do is they had them start at 10% of their one repetition max and they measured a bunch of different things and then they would increase 10% until 30% and then increase 5% after that. So basically all that means is they had them progressively increase the load until they were completely exhausted. So basically 10% increase, 10% increase, 10% increase until 30% and then 5%, 5%, 5% until exhaustion. So what they found though was that the group that was doing upper body movements ended up having a higher sympathetic nervous system response and vagal response. So what that means is it was triggering more of the catecholamines that would signal the heart rate to get higher. It was pretty wild stuff. So there we found there's actually like a hormonal sort of response to working the upper body. Now we can make a lot of different conclusions from this. Like we can hypothesize that you have more androgen receptors in your upper body, so you might have more hormone activity, you might have more adrenaline function, all this stuff. The fact is there's a pretty big difference there. But then we actually take a look at some other stuff and we discover what's really going on when we're working our upper body. See, what we're finding is that the upper limbs generate a different response. There is what is called a higher work component. So what that means is the body has to work harder to move blood to the upper limbs. You see, think of it like this. We have active muscles that really would cause what's called kind of a peripheral resistance on these, on these arteries. So when the heart is moving blood to the lower body, we have these massive arteries, and these massive arteries open up, they vasodilate to allow the blood to move because it's a bigger muscle. So the heart is able to sort of, in some ways, effortlessly move the blood down there and it comes right back. When we talk about our upper bodies, they're not really designed to have that amount of blood flowing through them. So there's some constriction. The muscles actually constrict the actual blood vessel. So the heart has a hard time pushing the blood through those vessels. So we see an increase in blood pressure, not to a bad degree, but we see that the heart has to work really, really hard. Now, additionally, we have a lot less in the way of just like uh, capillaries that are available. Like down in the legs, we have lots of different vessels, lots of different arteries, lots of different capillaries. In our upper limbs, it diffuses into smaller capillaries. So the blood has to work really, really hard, or the heart has to work really hard to get that blood there. Additionally, there's also less sites in which the red blood cells can actually deliver oxygen. So the red blood cells have to stay in a specific area for a longer amount of time to actually deliver the oxygen. So to make it simple, envision this. The heart beats, it has to work really hard to push the blood into the smaller capillaries in your upper body. And then the oxygen that has been carried by the blood is having to actually kind of go slow just so that it can be absorbed. The oxygen can actually be absorbed. So it's like it's hitting this backup. So the heart's just like, oh my gosh, we have to work really, really hard. 
It's not like it's going to give you a heart attack or anything like that. It's just a really cool hack. So whenever you're trying to get your heart rate up super fast, you want to incorporate upper body movements. So we're talking like battle ropes, we're talking uh, plyometric push-ups, we're talking muscle ups, we're talking anything where you're just going to be incorporating the upper body. So anything where you can just get moving a lot faster. The Airdyne bike, again, the, fan, the bike with the fan on it, where you're actually incorporating the upper body. These are going to get your heart rate up significantly higher, but we've also found there's an increase in what's called perceived exertion. So some studies have taken a look at lower body hit versus upper body hit, and although there is a change and a, a difference in the blood pressure and the heart rate, there's an even greater distinction between the perceived exertion. So for lack of a better way of saying it, if we just say for general simple numbers that uh, 100 is a very high perceived exertion and zero is a very low perceived exertion, it didn't quantify the same amount as correlated with the actual exertion. So if we use, okay, if we took 100 beats per minute as just like a normal heart rate, like again, this isn't gonna be realistic, I'm just doing it for comparative reasons. 100 beats per minute as a normal heart rate, zero being a low heart rate. It didn't compare. So basically someone that's doing an upper body movement might end up having a 70 heart rate, whereas someone that's doing a lower body movement might have a 50. But that same person that has a 70 heart rate is registering a 100 on the perceived exertion. So their perceived exertion is much higher than their actual exertion. So the point is, is that when you perceive more exertion, you can actually create a better workout for yourself and get more of a hormonal response. So again, that's kind of you know, a weird way of looking at it, but the reality is there. If you wanna feel like you have a better workout, then that's the way to go. So there's nothing really else to this video other than the fact that you need to be incorporating this kind of stuff. So one of the things that I do now, rather than having to work extra hard to get my heart rate up in between sets, is do a few plyometric push-ups or do some battle ropes in between my sets. It gets my heart up super high without fatiguing me dramatically. That way I feel like I'm getting my heart rate where it needs to go, so I feel like I'm getting the calorie burn, but I'm not exhausting myself at a thorough metabolic level like it would be if I was training my legs heavily. So anyway, take it or leave it, but I highly recommend that you incorporate upper body hit into your routines whenever possible, and I promise you, you can get more bang for the buck. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.